What is up, Erds? Mightiest subscribers, it's Ernie Blur without fear. Welcome back to the channel. So today's video is yet again another reward uh, that was earned from someone who donated during the bail project fundraiser that we did through the month of June. And this video is going to be all about the characters, Cloak and Dagger. That's right. We are going to break down these two Marvel Comics characters, their origins, their history, their powers, everything right now. But first, wash your damn hands and let's hit that intro word the wise grass only greener when it's fertilized gave them truth in these songs they prefer the lies destiny beautiful adrift in her purple lies you can't see me you stevie wondering how i reach more evolutions than evie and make it look easy. before we get started if you want to see more awesome comic book videos like this one it only takes two clicks to become one of earth's mightiest subscribers click click Cloak and Dagger, real names Tyrone, Ty Johnson, and Tandy Bowen respectively, first appeared in Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man number 64 in 1982, and were created by Bill Mantlo and Ed Hannigan. Tyrone and Tandy are two runaways who both took off to New York City for completely different reasons, with Tyrone fleeing the Big Apple after he witnessed his best friend get shot by police officers, something he felt he could have stopped if not for his speech impediment at the time, while Tandy fled her home of wealth and privilege because her supermodel mother refused to take the time to be a mother to her. Tyrone and Tandy met by happenstance when Tyrone originally considered stealing Tandy's purse to get by, but someone beat him too it and instead of robbing Tandy, he winds up chasing down the thief instead and returning her purse to her. They wind up becoming very close afterward, becoming literally the best of friends. But when some shady individual offers Tandy shelter, Tyrone realizes something might be up and when he tags along to keep her safe, they soon learn they've been tricked. A drug ring owned and operated by Spider-Man villain Silvermane and his Maja gang is developing a new type of synthetic heroin and they've been using runaway teenagers as test subjects. Despite surviving Silvermane's drugs, drugs that mind you have been killing other teenage test subjects, they do eventually escape from their captors and because of the synthetic drugs coursing through their bodies, they both develop incredible powers and choose to dedicate the rest of their lives to stamping out drugs wherever they find them and helping save other runaways from the fate that they suffered themselves. Tyrone took up the name Cloak to match his new shadowy and dark persona, also the ebon cloak he now wears, and Tandy took on the name Dagger to match her newfound ability to huck blades made of light. Cloak's abilities allow him to open portals into the Dark Force Dimension, a black and shadowy hellscape devoid of any and all light. By entering the Dark Force Dimension within his robes, Cloak is able to teleport himself, as well as others, to just about anywhere he desires. There seems to be no limit to how far he can go. An interesting part of his teleportation abilities is that when Tyrone enters the Dark Force Dimension, he only needs to take a few steps, and when he exits, he can wind up being somewhere miles away from where he started. Tyrone has become so adept at this that he knows all the various shortcuts in the Dark Force dimension. He's been shown to not just teleport from one point of origin on Earth to another point on Earth, but also between dimensions like the Negative Zone, something he did during Civil War, even teleporting roughly around a hundred superheroes out of it, though this did leave him incredibly exhausted. He can also create darkness, typically generating it from his cloak. Anyone that has ever experienced being trapped inside the darkness that Cloak creates will tell you that they experience a type of cold that is unearthly and freezes your body until it's numb. They've also suffered visions, both nightmarish and horrifying, all of them stemming from their own personal fears, regrets, and sins. Those who are exposed to Cloak's darkness for long stretches of time tend to go insane. During the popular Spider-Man crossover series Maximum Carnage, a new character, Shriek, was back retconned into Cloak and Dagger's own origin, and she verified this to be true as she was once trapped. Inside of Cloak so long, she became an unrelenting psychopath. As a result of his abilities, he can also psionically see the fears of people he touches. 
Cloak can also make himself completely intangible, allowing himself to pass through solid matter. Tyrone prefers to stay intangible and is always intangible by default. He can will himself to be tangible if he so desires. He can also accomplish this if he absorbs enough light to return him to normal. Another interesting tidbit about Cloak is that the cloak that he wears is not even unique to him. Other people who have wielded the Dark Force have also had cloaks of their own. And it's even implied in a lot of cases that he's not even the first person to wield the cloak that he uses. A side effect of Cloak's abilities is that he is always hungry for light. This light can either be a obtained from Tandy's abilities to harness light or from the light within other people that he absorbs into the Dark Force dimension. The addiction isn't just Tyrone's need for light though, it actually has nothing to do with him, but a monstrous force that now lives inside of him called the Predator. And if it doesn't get what it desires, it will die and take Tyrone with him. As of late, Tyrone has mostly conquered his addiction to light. He still needs it, but it doesn't rule him like it did in the past. Originally, when consuming light, especially that of daggers, he would describe the effect almost as if it were a drug. This is something Tyrone would struggle with a lot during the early days of their run, feeling regret and self-loathing for having to feed off Tandy's light force. In the early days, we learn Cloak can even feed off of Tandy's light force when he's nowhere near her. Dagger, as mentioned earlier, can create and manipulate light by way of the light force, the polar opposite of the dark force. She typically uses this ability to create daggers made of light that can unerringly travel to wherever she desires. These blades of light can both absorb the light and vitality of those struck by them or cure and heal them. She's even used these same daggers of light to cure other people's drug addictions and even remove drugs as well as other poisons and toxins from their body. She may also generate light from her own body, creating a powerful luminescence that can blind just about anybody. She was once capable of lighting an entire New York City during the events of Secret Empire, something that she did for weeks without stopping, even though it was incredibly painful to her. She had to do this because her light was the only thing that kept the monsters of the Dark Dimension at bay while the city was trapped within the shadows of the Dark Force Dimension. Much like Tyrone's ability to see the fear of others he touches, Tandy can see the hopes of those she touches. Her powers can become overcharged, resulting in some debilitating effects. This is also one of the reasons she uses her abilities to feed Cloak's hunger, to exhaust excess light from her body. Otherwise, she'd explode and very likely die, something that almost happened to her during her encounter with Shriek in Maximum Carnage, causing many to believe she was in fact dead. Her daggers cannot affect non-living things. However, her daggers are potent enough to sap a living person of their life force entirely, though she typically chooses to simply incapacitate her enemies. Typically, this leaves the person in a state of euphoric shock, forcing them to relive their mistakes and how different their lives could be if they made better choices. And in most cases, this makes all but the most hardened of criminals repent. Tandy's abilities have often meant the difference between criminals having a chance to reform and being trapped in the Dark Force dimension permanently until they go insane and are entirely consumed by the Predator inside of Cloak. Dagger possesses roughly the average human strength of someone who regularly exercises, but is exceptionally agile, likely due to her background in ballet. Tyrone, on the other hand, does have some modicum of heightened strength, but nothing on the level of superhuman. Both Tyrone and Tandy are skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat by way of street fighting, though they are only above average at best. Tandy has also been known to integrate her ballet dancing background into her fighting style to enhance her combat techniques. 
When Tyrone and Tandy first meet each other, Tyrone is 17 years of age and Tandy is 16. Tyrone is originally from Boston, Massachusetts, while Tandy is originally from Shaker Heights, Ohio. Cloak and Dagger often use churches as their base of operations and home, one in particular being the Holy Ghost Church where they first met their original confidant, Father Delgado. Tyrone's story is something that actually rings true to events going on in America America right now. When he witnessed his best friend get shot by police officers, the reason why? Because they believed they were the ones who had just recently robbed a store. But in fact, they were not the ones who did it at all. This mirrors a lot of what's going on in the real world, where innocent and unarmed black men and women and children have been murdered publicly, I would even dare say publicly executed, by untrained and or racist police police officers, automatically assuming the guilt of their victims and taking it upon themselves to execute them. Where in 99.9% .9 of all other cases where the victim would have been white, regardless of innocence, and in many cases, even in the face of blatant and obvious guilt, regardless of what horrible crimes they've committed, have been allowed in most cases to be taken alive and in some to even be set free. Spider-Man, a character both Tyrone and Tandy are closely allied with, happened to gain a new nemesis during Dan Slott's run on Amazing Spider-Man, Mr. Negative, a character who we learned was back retconned to fit in with Cloak and Dagger's own origin. He fell prey to the same experiments that turned them into Cloak and Dagger, whereas he was turned into something that was a bit of a mix of both of them, and he would later become one of their villains. Oddball fact, originally Cloak, unlike Dagger, did not eat regular food after gaining his powers, though this was later retconned. As one could likely guess considering both characters' motifs, Cloak is typically depicted as being more okay with the idea of killing the criminals they face, while Dagger tends to be the voice of reason in giving them a chance to reform. It is important to note, despite this, Cloak's tendency to kill his enemies is more of a byproduct of the monster housed within him rather than his own personal morals driving him to do so. That said, Dagger is not entirely against killing either, but only if she encounters someone who is either so entirely evil and incapable of reform or someone who just willfully refuses to. After their debut in Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man number 64 in 1982 and various guest appearances since, the duo went on to be a big hit for Marvel. But after issue 11 of their then bi-monthly series, they were combined with Marvel Sorcerer Supreme Doctor Strange in the series Strange Tales due to lagging sales. Cloak and Dagger's series rarely, if ever, focused on actual superpowered criminals when they first started. They typically focused on street level criminals and gangs, with Tyrone and Tandy usually being the only superpowered people in those stories. Towards the end of their second series, they did face off with Doctor Doom and lived to tell the tale. They would even later face him again in a third series. Cloak and Dagger at one point in time were considered to be mutants during their early run, even publicly referring to themselves as mutants in various stories. They even had a series called The Mutant Misadventures of Cloak and Dagger, a series where they regularly crossed over with various X-Men related teams like X-Factor, The New Mutants, and X-Force. Them being mutants was something that was believed to be true all the way up until post Civil War, roughly 2007 and 2008. By the time of Dark Reign in 2009, they were eventually retconned to be human mutates. Now for the uninitiated, that means that mutants are those born with their special abilities. Even though in some cases they don't develop these powers until they reach puberty or they are subject to outside stimuli. Human mutates are born normal and gain powers later after an outside mutagenic agent changes them. Like Spider-Man's radioactive spider bite, Bruce Banner's gamma bomb, or the Fantastic Four being struck by cosmic rays. 
Despite this, in Dark X-Men The Beginning Number 2, Norman Osborn still tried to recruit them for his Dark X-Men team. Even after them stating they were not mutants, he simply replied, you may as well be. Kind of lending credence to both their original origins as being mutants and also a common criticism in Marvel Comics uh, regarding mutant characters that mutants and regular superhumans really aren't that different. Fact of the matter is, Dr. Nemesis put this to bed entirely in 2010's Cloak and Dagger Volume 4, Number 1, a one-shot issue revealing that they had absolutely zero X-Gene readings on Cerebro. Dagger does believe at this point they could technically test their bone marrow to definitively find an answer, and Beast even agrees with this, that Cerebro is not absolute. There can be deeper tests that could reveal latent mutant X genes in their body, but ultimately, Dr. Nemesis believes the results will remain the same. Captain America would also state that they were not mutants, even though he is not an authority on the matter. Later that same year, in 2010's Heroic Age, Heroes, Volume 1, Number 1. Things get even more interesting when you realize that in 2013, despite all of this retconning, they are still listed as mutants in Marvel Fact Files Volume 1, number 19. Though this is something to take note of, despite Quotyfingers not being a mutant, Dagger is the daughter of one, Nathaniel Tyler, aka the Lord of Light. At one point in time during the mutant misadventures of Cloak and Dagger number four, Tyrone is killed off and is replaced by the villainous Ecstasy, who takes control of his cloak when it returns to her after Tyrone's death. Though he later returns in mutant misadventures of Cloak and Dagger number eight to reclaim it from her, enveloping them both inside the cloak and teleporting themselves into the Dark Force dimension. When Tyrone returns, he is Cloak again and Ecstasy is no more. There have been various alternate versions of Cloak and Dagger throughout their history. During Age of Apocalypse, Cloak and Dagger are part of the Sinister Six and presumably died in a battle against the X-Men. In the Spider-Ham series, Cloak and Dagger appear as both a frog and badger, appropriately named Croak and Badger. In House of M, Cloak is a member of the underground human resistance led by Luke Cage. It is never revealed where Tandy is during this event. During Marvel Zombies vs. the Army of Darkness, a zombified cloak and dagger can be found. They also appear in the Ultimate Marvel Universe, only this time instead of being runaways, they were high school sweethearts who were in a car wreck during their drive to senior prom. Declared legally dead by Roxxon, they were later used as test subjects by them as well, testing all sorts of dark matter on them, which resulted in them becoming cloak and dagger. During Spider Island, Tyrone and Tandy's powers were swapped. Tandy wound up having Cloak's abilities to manipulate the Dark Force, while Cloak had Tandy's ability to manipulate the Light Force. This is not the first time this has happened, though. In the Mutant Misadventures of Cloak and Dagger number 19, Villain Despair shows them what would have happened to them had he not intervened and manipulated the events surrounding their origin. This would have flipped their natures, causing Cloak to become Dagger and Dagger to become Cloak. During the Secret Wars tie-in Battle World World Runaways, Cloak and Dagger have a similar swap up like in Spider Island and The Mutant Misadventures of Cloak and Dagger number 19. Only this time, they are revealed to be brother and sister and haven't just swapped powers, but identities as well. Just like in The Mutant Misadventures, Tandy would be known as Cloak and Tyrone would be known as Dagger. Like many popular comic book characters throughout history, Cloak and Dagger were a very obvious allegory for something that troubled America at the time. Just like how Captain America was an allegory for punching Nazis, both figuratively and literally, the X-Men being an allegory for civil rights, and Superman being an allegory for immigration, Cloak and Dagger were an allegory for the war on drugs. Sadly, as I mentioned earlier when discussing their powers, this is actually deeper than just their hatred of drugs. Cloak is literally addicted to Dagger. He has to consume light, otherwise he'll die. Dagger lacks this need. She really doesn't need Cloak for anything other than companionship, though later she would be saddled with the need to vent light from herself lest she overload. This has led to them becoming a less problematic union in terms of who needs who. But it's so rare a thing, it's easy to forget. That said, Tyrone and Tandy don't typically have the same squabbles that normal teams do, and they do not disagree on much other than sometimes the nature of their relationship. 
All that said, one could also make a strong case for Cloak and Dagger being an allegory for interracial relationships and marriages, albeit the one-sided kind. Yes, they have been romantic in the past, and sometimes it simply depends on who is writing their story at the time. Even as recent as 2018 and 2019's Cloak and Dagger miniseries, they were together, broken up, and then back together. Even going as far as to date other people to piss the other one off. But as stated earlier, their relationship is incredibly one-sided. Cloak craves Dagger. He needs her. But Dagger is usually depicted as booty fingers, more than willing to feed Tyrone's need out of a sense of duty because he saved her life, and she'd be dead a long time ago without him, but ultimately wants more from life than he can give her. Speaking as a man in an interracial relationship turned marriage for a combined 11 years, I find this dynamic not okay. Though I will admit, Tandy and Tyrone's relationship is much better handled now, albeit messy AF, and revealed to be more akin to actual love rather than someone's need for a fix and another person's savior complex. Tyrone and Tandy have made various appearances on television with one of their first being on the Ultimate Spider-Man animated series with Cloak being voiced by the legendary Phil Lamar and Dagger by Ashley Eckstein. The first episode they appear in is, oddly enough, titled Cloak and Dagger. They also appear in the episodes New Warriors, The Symbiote Saga Part 2, and the two-part episode finale, Graduation Day. Cloak and Dagger are technically a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They have appeared in two separate shows set within the MCU, first of which was their own series on Freeform, Marvel's Cloak and Dagger, with Aubrey Joseph taking on the role of Cloak and Dagger being portrayed by Olivia Holt. This version of the characters are an amalgam of both their Earth-616 and Earth-1610 counterparts, without narcotics being a major part of their backstory. Interesting sidebar, Dagger actress Olivia Holt is from my neighborhood. The more you know. As for the second show in the MCU they appear in, these same versions of Cloak and Dagger are featured in the third and final season of Marvel's Runaways starting with the end of the episode, Left Hand Path. Cloak and Dagger return to animation in the revamped Spider-Man series, Marvel's Spider-Man. In the season two episode titled, Cloak and Dagger, much like their ultimate Spider-Man debut. Aubrey Joseph and Olivia Holt, who both play the live action versions of Cloak and Dagger, also voice their respective characters on the series. Back in 2006, Marvel had originally planned on making a film of Cloak and Dagger when they signed a film deal with Paramount Pictures. Their film debut would have run alongside the likes of Captain America, Doctor Strange, Black Panther, and Shang-Chi, all of which were films that were later made by Marvel Studios. Cloak and Dagger have featured in multiple video games, first of which was as assist characters in 1994's Spider-Man and Venom, Maximum Carnage for the Sega Genesis, and the SNES. They were also NPCs in 2009's Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2 for the Xbox 360, Xbox One, Nintendo Wii, Nintendo DS, PSP, PS2, PS3, PS4, and PC, with Cloak and Dagger being voiced by Ahmed Best of Star Wars fame and America Young, respectively. Cloak and Dagger make another appearance in video games, this time playable in Marvel's Avengers Alliance on iOS, Android, PC, and Facebook. This appearance was notable due to both of them being controlled as a single unit. Cloak and Dagger are NPCs in 2013's Marvel Heroes on Xbox One, PS4, PC, and Mac. Cloak is played by Rick D. Wasserman, while the legendary Tara Strong voices Dagger. Cloak and Dagger are once again playable in 2016's Marvel Avengers Academy for iOS, Android, and Amazon. While in 2017, Cloak and Dagger were added to 2013's Marvel Puzzle Quest game on iOS, Android, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PC, and Kindle. Also in 2017, Cloak and Dagger were released as DLC characters for LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 for the PS4, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PC, and Mac. Now, normally when I do these videos, I usually like to pick who I would like to play these characters uh, if they were to be on the big or small screen. And honestly, we have kind of already had that. And I had no problem with what Aubrey Joseph and Olivia Holt brought to the table. In all honesty, I feel like should these characters be used again, they should reprise those roles, even if they're older by the time that Marvel and Disney finally decide to do something with it. I think that these two really did a good job. So no, I don't really have 
anybody in mind when it comes to, uh, you know, trying to fan cast these characters. I feel like Cloak and Dagger should be younger characters, even though in the comics, though they, you know, their origins were when they were teenagers, they were always depicted as being so much older. And honestly, that never sat right with me. But anyways, the point of the matter is, I usually do this. I like to pick things I think that you should check out if you want to get to know more about these characters. So I'm gonna go ahead and be honest with you. One of the first places I would start is with their first appearance in Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man number 64. I would also recommend checking out their original miniseries, the four-parter Cloak and Dagger number one through four from 1983 by Bill Manslow and Rick Leonardi. I also recommend checking out Cloak and Dagger volume three, number one, The One Shot by Stuart Moore and Mark Brooks. And I also recommend checking out Cloak and Dagger Shades of Grey by Dennis Hopeless, David Messina, and Francesco Mana, and Cloak and Dagger Negative Exposure by Dennis Hopeless, Francesco Mana, and Rari Coleman. I love these two characters. They're characters that don't really get used as properly as I personally would have liked, but you know, hey, sometimes that just is the way it is. Their origins are kind of problematic to me, but I feel like over recent time, and especially, you know, uh, through the introductions of them in newer media, they've cleaned up some of those more problematic aspects of these two characters and made them both more complete characters than what they were initially created as. I think that Tyrone is a much more complete character than what he was back back in the 80s and 90s, and Tandy, though she has always kind of shown affection for Cloak, I feel like her affection means more now than what it did then. It seemed almost kind of, and you guys know I hate this word, almost kind of seemed like token affection uh, as opposed to actual affection, uh, at least the way it was written back in the day. I feel like now she actually feels like she is in love with Tyrone. And Tyrone has always kind of seemed like he was in love with her, so that wasn't ever really a problem, but I do appreciate that that relationship is much more symbiotic than it was parasitic. Anyways, let me know what you think about Marvel's Cloak and Dagger. Were you always aware of them, or are you today years old finding out about them? Wash your damn hands and sound off in the comments. So hey, you made it to the end of the video. Awesome for you. If you enjoyed this video, and if you made it this far, I don't see how you didn't, do me a favor, Hulk smash that like button. And if you wanna see more awesome videos like this one, make sure you click subscribe so you can become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers. And tap that bell so you know when I post up. Also, feel free to go check out my Patreon, where if you chuck in a buck, you can get early access to most of my videos up to a week early. And if you have time, make sure you swing by nerd901.com, where you can find more of my content as well as other amazing stuff. Anyway, Anyways, until next time, I love you 3000 plus ultra.